What's up, y'all? It's Pat St. Charles from Fofo. Coming live and direct from my lap. We're going to have a conversation about a 50-year-old black sister, one of my generation of people, who is a divorcee, two kids, probably late 20s, excuse me, late teens, early 20s. And she is a person that her name is Organized Chaos. Organized Chaos. Think about that word for a moment. How can chaos be organized? They can't. They misnomers. What is a misnomer? Well, a misnomer, a misnomer is a wrong or an accurate name or designation. A wrong or accurate use of the name or term. For example, neighborhood policing would be a misnomer, right? Or morning sickness is a misnomer for women because morning sickness can happen throughout the day if you're pregnant. So in her title, of Organized Chaos, she takes this misnomer and tries to basically talk about books and philosophies as she's getting her PhD. And she puts up front her five areas or six areas. And it's a female, black female channel. And the YouTube space, which is a very small space for us. Remember, there's only 20 million black women in the United States, 20 million black men, 40 million of us. We say half are kids under 18. So that might be 10 million black women that are married age range and 10 million black men. But then we got people who are not technically savvy. So they're not going to even be involved in the YouTube space. She's from Michigan. She went to Hampton University, like a lot of blacks from the north, go down to the south for the degree, go back up to the north where they struggle and survive. South of Flint, Michigan, Councilman Eric Mays fighting for rights in a lose-lose battle, but he still got to fight. And we're going to talk today is philosophies that this black lady, who is the person we're talking about, at age 50, which is the same woman right here, just the makeup is here, no makeup is here on the face. And she is going to talk about a philosophy of a book by a white man named Eckhart Tolle a German white spiritual philosopher, a so-called German teacher. And if you go online, you'll see lots of videos on this guy. He's asking pastoral answers to very complex questions. And that really is why it drew me, because I'm a pastor. And I believe that that's the reason why pastors are called to be pastors, is to, as Ephesians Chapter 5 teaches us to train up the saints. Let me show you what God gave in the world in Ephesians 5 for the reason why we have these gifts. The great apostle Paul wrote this to the church at Ephesus and it applies to the majority. It applies to all Christians, whether you are Gentile or Astor or Hebrew. It applies to everybody. But it was written to the Gentiles, and those who are Hebrew Israelites need to also apply this because it applies to us as well. Verse 1 talks about be followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also walked in us and have given himself for us as an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling, savor, 
savior, savor, or savior. And fornication and cleanliness covenants, don't let it be named again amongst you as you're becoming saints, as well as filthiness or foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who's our dollar, and we can break down that part. We get it. Let no man deceive you. And that's the biggest thing God wants us all to know, because man does deceive. Because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children that are disobeying him. That is us and those that are not following him. But then he tells us, be not partakers with those individuals. Don't get away, stay away. For you are sometimes dark or in sin or in darkness. But now you're in the light of the Lord. Walk as the children that are in the light. And first now for the spirit, fruit of the spirit, of the Holy Spirit. And he breaks down these fruits of the spirit. Is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them for his shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. It's a shame to do that. It's a shame. But in all things that are reproved, make manifested by the light, for whatever doeth make it manifest is light. Therefore he saith, awake. Awake, that thou sleepest and arise from the dead, as Christ shall give thee light. See that you walk circumspectly, but not as fools, but as wise people, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of God or the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, which is in excess. And of course, we as Christians, I pull that out, out of context. But drinking is something that people still to this day battle. I don't drink. I just think God never had a desire for it. Where is the excess to be filled with the Spirit? Verse 9, speaking, 19, excuse me, to yourselves in Psalms. I love Psalms. Worship, praise. That's why I'm up. God gave me the desire to love, praise, and worship, and that's been my passion since 1997. It still is, and I have no desire to change. Spiritual songs, songs, and hymns, making melody in your heart to the Lord, and giving thanks always for all things unto Yahweh, and 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 so far, and I know it's unto God and the Father. That's funny. It says unto God and the Father. God is the Father. I know that unto God and the Father. No, no, God is the Father. In the name of Yahshua, Mashiach, or Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, okay. And this is the biggest part that a lot of us Christians got to do every day. Submit ourselves one to another in the fear of God. It's very hard to do, and I don't think we can do it well. I don't think we do a good job of it at all. I know. I. I don't think. I'm not. I don't. Other than my job, that's what I submit to. But really. On a daily basis, I'm not married, so I'm not submitting to a woman, and and, um, and no one's submitting to me because I'm not married. So then, verse 22, this breaks down that whole submitting part, and a lot of people get off in this, and it's gotten a lot of marriages divorced, a lot of couples in trouble, a lot of people that should never got married got married, and they got divorced because they didn't know how to submit to anybody prior to getting married. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Notice not, not to somebody else's, but your own. I've, I've never heard a man preach that. They always say, why submit to your husbands? No, 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 no. Your own husbands, not someone. It, God was precise in what he wrote. As unto the Lord, your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ held the church. And he's the savior of the body. Therefore... As the church is subject unto Christ, because he's the head, so let wives be subject unto husbands in everything. 
on that. And that's a big problem in our community. But Deuteronomy 28 is the reason why. Because God put a curse on the black people, the Israelites. And the biggest curse, one of the biggest curses he put on us in Deuteronomy is the curse that there will be enmity as I get my mouse to do enmity, there it is, um, on in the relationships. So when you go look at Deuteronomy and how God said in verse 64, he'll scatter us across the whole world and we'll serve other gods. If we're serving other gods and wooden stone, how are we going to have good relationships? We're serving other gods. And those gods are teaching us lies. But look at some of the curses, and we got many of them. This breaks my heart right here. Right? And toward her babies that come out of her vagina or coming out from between her feet. What does coming out from between her feet mean? Coming out of her vagina. And toward the, her children, which she shall push or bear out of her vagina. For she shall eat them for wanting of all things secretly. Ain't that something? I mean, God was saying, you would kill your own kids. All right? Verse 56. Tender and delicate woman among you, which would not venture to set her soul of her feet on the ground for, because she was so delicate. Her eyes shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, her breast. Evil toward her son and evil toward her daughter. And that's why we look at our women today. They're, they're evil toward their boyfriend or husbands. They become ex-boyfriends, ex-husbands. Evil toward their kids. And that's why we have a lot of parents who whose children don't. They respect them because they were taught that out of fear, but not out of love. And, and a lot of adults have issues with their parents even years after they're dead because what they did. you know. So Deuteronomy 28 right here is the reason why. And so when I read that, and then I read what God said in Ephesians about subjection, man, you understand why it's hard for a person that's, that's Hebrew Israelite or the African American race brought over here due to the curse of Deuteronomy 28 to have success in relationships. And then women sit back and wonder why I can't find a good man. So husbands... Love your wives. Well, how when you are under the curse, right? Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. How does the water, the word, wash and cleanse the church? Now, that should be a great question. That he might sanctify the church and cleanse the church by using the word to wash the church. That's what that means. Using the word of God to cleanse, sanctify, and wash the dirt off the church. And how do we know that the church has been cleansed enough and sanctified enough for Yahshua to receive it? Because in verse 27, it says that he might present the church Back to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So, husbands ought to love their own wives as their own body. And he, husband, that loveth his wife, loveth himself. For no husband ever hated his own flesh, but nourished it. And cherish it, even as the Lord nourishes and cherishes the whole church of faith. We are one, all members of his body, uh-huh, uh-huh. We're members of his body, or of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause, and this is where we get a lot of marriages, but a lot of people miss the verse 1 through 30 before they get to 31. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Many of us don't have fathers and mothers, but just have mothers. And shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great ministry, mystery, and sure it certainly is. But I speak concerning Christ and the church and of marriage. You speak of both. Nevertheless, if let everyone in particular love his wife husbands, even as himself, and see that the wife serves and reverences her husband. Okay. But not done yet, though. Let's go to let's go and go to first chapter six. Chapter six breaks down the, the actual spiritual wickedness and the powers that we fight every single day. I meant to call out chapter I said chapter five, but Holy Spirit, I'm wrong. I'm part of people I'm wrong. It's a it must be the next chapter four before, because and I haven't meditated on Ephesians like I need to. So let's go meditate on it a little bit. There we go. Yeah, chapter four, Holy Spirit is. So starting right here in verse, verse four, there's one body and one spirit, even as you're called in the hope of your calling, there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is the or Yahuwah, who's the Father of all, above all, through all, and inside of you all. But here is that first but after all that unto every one of you people is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. That's what we're talking about here. Grace to minister, grace to teach, grace to do the will of God. Certain people got it, some and certain people don't. Most don't, a few have it. Wherefore, therefore, he said, Yah, poor, uh, basically, when Yahshua, now we're talking about Jesus. Therefore, when Jesus said, when he ascended up on high in heaven, he led captivity captive meaning taking the keys of hell and death from Satan. That's right, the, the issue that millions of people don't believe in, but I will to the day I die, that Jesus took sin when he died and went to hell and took the, the atoning sacrifice, but he took the powers of hell from those that believe in Yahuwah and Yahshua. Okay. And so he gave gifts unto us men. Now, Yahshua, who had ascended to heaven, is but first who had descended into the lower parts of hell. He, Yahshua, that descended is the same person that ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, that's good. I get that. I get that, Holy Spirit. All right. And then he gave, and this is what he gave, some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I'm an evangelist. I would love to be a pastor and teacher, but I'm not married, and I, I, I'm, and I have no church. And uh, to pastor, you got to have a repetitive every day, every Sunday. You know, and again, that's a job. And, uh, unfortunately, I'm not blessed to have that. So I will study the word and I will pray and I will worship and I will study and I will preach and I will preach and I will preach and teach. But, you know, I got to keep, I got to keep on following the will of God for my life. But listen to this part. He gave some apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come into the unity of the Christian faith, and until the unity of the knowledge of the Son of Yahshua, and until a perfect man or woman, and until the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, until we henceforth be no more children, that's what this girl is right here, being tossed to the left and to the right, to and fro, carried about by every wind of false doctrine, 
by the sleight of man and cunning craftiness. That's right. That's right, Eckhart Tolle. Whereby they lie and wait to the sea, but speaking the truth and love may grow up unto him or her in all things which they had, even Christ. From whom the whole body of Christ fairly joined together, compacted by that which every joint is supplying every other joint, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part or joint, make an increase in the body of Christ unto the edifying of itself in love. Hallelujah. And that is the ultimate purpose for the word of God and to be taught. To help people like this beautiful lady right here caught in the false doctrine by Eckhart Tolle. And as the first 19 minutes of this 43 minute blog, she was talking about a book that she got from this guy named Eckhart Tolle who's got like five books and all Oprah Winfrey's spiritual book club and reality is you go and do some research you got by him. He's probably an atheist, agnostic. I know I mean, he believes in not one way, and that's the hardest part you know, because they don't, but thank God. He's coming to the end of his life. He's 75 years. Time is ticking away. I hope he finds the truth before it's too late. As this lady's 50, and I hope she finds the truth before it's too late. Now we're going to listen to her talk about boyfriends and her talk about not being able to find a black man after being married, after having a divorce, after raising her kids. Now her kids are grown and now she's 50 and I want a companion. I want someone to live with and love me and be there for me. And I can't find them. Why? Well, it's a big reasons, multiple reasons. But the biggest reason of all is she's serving other gods, gods that are not of Yahshua, Yahuwah, and the Holy Spirit, but gods of wood and stone. God of Deuteronomy chapter 28 said, we would serve if we uh, would not obey, and our ancestors did not obey the word. But for all of us now, thousands of years later, after those commandments were spoken to our ancestors, we got a chance to break free. If we hear the word and apply it to our lives. So the spirit in the name of Jesus, we ask you to help this lady and other people who don't know you to know you are not a form of godliness, a form of God, not a form of godliness, but the true godliness of Yahshua, the true light, the true Ephesians chapter for glory of God from the whole body fitly joined together and compacted and compacted by that. What by what that love that which every joint is supplied, right? That the uh, Yahshua power, right? According to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body of Christ unto the edifying of itself, its own body in love. Glory be to God. So let's get on and let's hear her give her tragic story about love and trying to find a, a loved one. And like Kevin Samuel said, this is true. The highest level you can ever get is the father of your kids. So if you are not, if you are divorced, get back with your husband. That's If you can't, you're going to die and should die alone. ones coming up um, in some weekends before the kids get back. Once the kids come back to school, life really does. You know, it goes back to, girl, you ain't got time. Plus, I'm in grad school again. Um, but when he says this, the awakening happens as they suddenly become aware of the kinds of thoughts they habitually think, especially persistent negative thoughts that they may have been identified with all of their lives. I just figured out why I attract emotionally unavailable men because that is the relationship that I've had with my not necessarily with my father but growing up he was not available to me the way that he should have been or the way that he said that he would be 
And then my brother, me and my brother had a real big blowout last year. And I realized my brother hasn't really liked me my entire life. Do you know what that looks like? Like I've built this relationship over 50 years with you and you didn't like the relationship. And I had no idea you didn't like the relationship, but I really looked at him as the gold standard of men. And because of that, I've attracted men that were just like him. Not necessarily saying that they didn't like me, but they were emotionally unavailable to me, just like my brother has been my entire life. He just functioned as my big brother. He just did things because my mom told, you got to do this for her. You got to do this for her and do this for her. He didn't like it, though. He didn't love it, though. I don't think there's ever been a man that's been emotionally available to me my entire existence. Yes, I've been married. Yes, I have two kids. Yes, I've been in relationships and situationships and all of those things, but I've never been loved. Never. I've loved from the extent that I know how or the extent that I think I know what love looks like and feels like, but me as a being as just being who I am, like to awaken to that. All right, so you got to realize that with women, they go on a spur of consciousness and they will tangent off and tangent off and tangent off and they don't stick to the thoughts. So one of the great things the late great Kevin Samuels really started making me do, especially now, that we live in the YouTube world is record what they say. Play back what they say. Play back what they say to them. And listen very, 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 very well. Because when you replay back what they said back to themselves, the women always will say, well, I, what I meant to say was... And Kevin say, no, that is not right. You meant to say what you said when you just said it. Facts. And that is exactly what holding ourselves to a standard represents. This lady states earlier that she was never loved by her father. So now we got like my situation of not having a father. We have a black sister who is 50 plus and doesn't have, a, as I said, she's born in 72. I'm born in 74, so she's 51. And she's saying that she did not have her father available to her. Her father would be probably 75 today if he's alive. At least 20 years old. At least 20. And so... She then jumps past that whole thing about not having a father, right? And doesn't go into why her father was unavailable to teach her how to love a man and what to look for as the gold standard in a man. She goes to her brother. Bulls! Y'all are the same siblings. Your brother, even if he was 10 years older than you, cannot be the standard of the men you lust after and want to make love to and want to have sex with and have babies with. It's your father. It's your father or lack thereof of a father. So right there, there's a therapy point that needs 3 to 10 to 15 years of talking out to get healing there, just on that part. Then the next part is why your mother and father are divorced and why mom had you and had your brother. Because it wasn't like she could have, you know, had to have you. She made a choice, just like you made a choice to have two kids yourself. And the thing that we why I'm saying all this, because this is the same thing your kids have to go through as well when they get to 50. 
All this is cyclical, guys. If she's doing all this work for herself at 51, your 25-year-old kids are going to be doing the same crap when they get to be 51 if you don't help them. And that's how it's been in the black community. A repetitive cycle, but why? Well, I argue Deuteronomy chapter 28 and serving our parents serving other gods, our grandparents serving other gods, our great-grandparents serving other gods. And those that find the true and living God and serve him, they get the blessing. That's why in the black community, not, not all black people have dysfunctional relationships. Not all black Couples have dysfunctional marriages. A large majority, but not all. There are some success stories out there. But there's a lot more failure stories, too. So, she breaks down. He, Her brother, I don't know who he is, was the gold standard. Then she says, now me and my brother, I don't know the difference in age, had a falling out. A falling out. And now they may not be talking for 10 years, right? They may not talk for the rest of their life. Maybe over. And I asked the question, what happened to you and your father? You're 50 years old. Did you ever, like Kevin Sanders, say, go have a sit down with your dad and say, dad, tell me why you and mom broke up and give me the facts from a man's perspective, I'm a female, but I can't learn a man's perspective until I hear a man give me his full 10, 15, 20-year relationship perspective experiences with my mom. Honest, no holds barred. I'm a woman. I got kids. I've been ucked. I've had sperm in my vagina. I've done it all. There ain't nothing you can tell me that by now at 50 I hadn't done. Hopefully. Because she's already made her mistakes as she now talk about her bad choices and the man that she got kids with. So I want to say that as we listen to her talk, there is, I call surface level, and there's deep level introspection and thinking. It's easy to be on the surface and get the self-help books and pull out the quick, quick quotes. One thing about the Word of God, it goes all the way, in, as the Bible says, man, it's quick, sharp, powerful, as a two-edged sword, pierced to the dividing of the sun, the soul, the spirit, the joints, and marrow, and is a discerner, a discerner, discerner, of the thoughts and intents of your heart. The books that these guys write, these self-help books, aren't that good because they're written by man. But the inspired word from Yahweh is billions of times better than the books that you can get in this store. And so I thank God for the word. But I realized that she didn't acknowledge her father, and, and the anger that she should have as righteous anger of why her father was emotionally, physically unavailable to her and millions of other women just like her. Let's keep listening to what she says. never been loved. I've never been important to a man ever in my life. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Like, do you know who I am? Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you see this thing? Do you see this avatar? Like, <laughs> do you know the intelligence that exists in this girl? Do you know how fun this girl is? Like all of the things, none of that matters, y'all. I've never been loved. I've never been loved the way that I deserve to be loved. And now that I'm aware of that, like once you sit in that knowledge, I can't go back. I can't have anything less. And I recognize I'm at a big age. I may never experience that. 
And you got to be okay with that. Like every experience is not for everybody to experience in life. When me and my girlfriend had that conversation yesterday, it just felt like you really are growing up, little girl. Like, girl, it's so, and you oh, I'm okay. I know what I deserve. My ego doesn't have to be involved in any of this. My humanness can step to the side and let my beingness run the show. And if you are not for me, it's not that you're against me, but I can't be with you. I can't. My humanist, let it step aside. Let my beingness run the show. Let my humanist step aside. Let my beingness run the show. This come from these guys, these Eckhart Tolle's, these philosophies, doctors of devils, false doctrines. Notice Yahshua was never acknowledged. Jesus was never acknowledged. Christ never acknowledged. The word of God, scripture, never acknowledged. She's like, I've never been loved. Well, maybe it's because you're under the curse of Deuteronomy 28. And you don't even know what that even means because you don't aspire to the word of God because thousands or hundreds of people, whatever, your parents weren't saved, your mom wasn't saved, or if they were, they were a form of godliness but did not have the power. And you are now on this self-help PhD grad school journey. And as we all are, trying to find answers as you should but the reality is if, it, if the place and the knowledge you get does not acknowledge Christ Yahshua as Lord it's false doctrine and in the end it will not work can't reside with you. I can't function with you. I can't give my presence because this is a present to be in my presence. I can't give that to you. I can be by myself and be cool and happy. I don't have a problem with that. But being with somebody ever again who does not value me, who does not see my worth, who does not sincerely love me won't happen again. And I'm clear on that. And now we're going to do the techniques that women do all the time. The techniques that women do all the time. Question, answer, question, answer, question. The Professor Kingsfield, Harvard Law School, Socratic Method style of teaching. Question. What does it mean to fully love you? Question. How long does it take for a person to show that they or prove that they love you? A year? Five years? Ten years? Twenty years? You're 52. Question. Did you really take the time to ask the questions to yourself about your 19-year-old self, 16-year-old self, 25-year-old self, 35-year-old self, and 45-year-old self when it came to the penises that you selected to have sex with and to have children with? Question. Do you know why you wanted those individuals? And can you honestly have an argument, meaning a premise and a conclusion, of why you chose X guy Y guy, B guy, A guy, C guy, D guy, whatever. Was it lust? Was it lust? Was it lust? Question. Do you know exactly who you are? Because it looks like, based on the philosophies you're reading, you're reading philosophies of white German teachers that are white and married, that uh, uh atheist, agnostic, and you're a Hebrew Israelite? Question, do you know the greatness of who you are, despite the curses of the law that are our people as a whole? 
question. Do you know God loves you? But he will not ascribe to this philosophy. Question and relationship now questions more germane to relationships. I understand the argument of wanting to be loved by billions of women today want that. And billions of men today want that. We have eight billion people on the planet, so I can say billions of people want love. But the reality is. If you didn't grow up with your father and your father never showed you masculine fatherly love to you as a girl and a young girl and a teenager and a young adult and your mother paid the ultimate price because she didn't get love from the man that created you because she was obviously in love with that man to have you as a child from her legs, out of her legs from between her legs as the scripture teaches us. Do you think the anger that's in your mama's heart by growing up and dying alone because the odds are she is alone and soon to die because if you're 50, she's in her 70s and closer to death. Do you think that the anger that's in her heart and the sadness is in her heart, knowing that she's closer to meeting God, is also by default put into your heart because you're in her presence. In relationships today, I think a lot of us put ownership on our parents. And we say, well, and, and rightfully, to a point, so they made sex, they had sex, we were created. And, there, and the Bible gives a responsibility in many verses to raise up our children and nurture the admonition of God, and they fail tremendously. But I do believe that we have some, as they say, agency or ability to help ourselves, self help, and work on ourselves. Despite how messed up our parents were. My mom died. When I was 25, my dad was gone when I was five. I had never had him in my life. So I already was set up for failure, knowing that I can talk to my mom because she's dead. We will never have conversations about things that I'm having right now because she's dead. Her mother died at 83 years old, and we never had conversations with her about those things because she didn't have conversations with her own daughter, so how can she have conversations with her grandson? I'm talking about my grandmother. My grandmother never told my mother who her father was. She lived her whole life searching to find out who her father was. All because of sins of mom, of grandma, the child babes. I refused to let it happen in my life, and I made a conscious decision I wasn't getting in relationships until I'd done some introspective work of my own heart and mind. I thank you. Lord, help me get that knowledge, that revelation, and pass it on to these beautiful people in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's let the rest of this play, and then we'll stop. Like, I just got there. And so wherever you are in your journey, whether you are young, middle-aged, or older, learn to love you. Learn to set your ego to the side. Learn to see reality in life, call things as they are. Collect the data on your relationships. Are you giving more 
than you are getting from somebody? And if you are, wake your ass up and stop now. You deserve better. You deserve all of the things. You deserve to feel emotionally secure in any space that you reside in, whether it is work. So now like my new thing is, when I go to work now, I'm just going to do my job. I cannot be emotionally invested in work anymore because the people there are about the politics. When you get out of the classroom, it is so much politics. And y'all, I don't do politics. It's just not my ministry. I could care less about your feelings because what I bring is truth. I am truth. I am light and I am love. And when that doesn't get returned to me in a respectful manner and politics gets involved, I'm going to shut down and I'm just going to do my job. And when I get home, I'm going to give love to my family and to my friends and work be damned. That has to shut off. I, um, at my retreat this weekend, um, there's a thing. And I wish I would have, I didn't even think about bringing it up here with me. There's a rock. At the end of your work day, y'all, take something, give yourself a visual cue, set it to a side of your desk where you say, done for the day, out of office, and you leave work at work. Because I promise you this, when, when, because there will be an end for everybody, you will either leave that employment, you will either leave the planet. When your end comes, you will be replaced immediately. We are all irreplaceable. Set your rock to the side, end your day, and go home and be with people that really do love you that don't have politics on their agenda, that care about you. And if they if they aren't there, like my kids are about to be out, go home and just love yourself. You deserve you. Give yourself the gift of you. We do deserve that. Yes, choose you. Check that data, y'all. I'm telling you, that helped me. It was a very short time. Yeah, no, I need my Carmex. It was a very short time when this man came back into my life. And when I decided I couldn't keep, we're we not going to keep doing this. This is like, I'm not 20 years old no more. I'm 51 years old. Like, I, I, I'm not going to keep playing these, these 20 year old games with you. You don't care about me. You don't love me. You don't want me. Well, you want me, but you don't want me, right? Like, no, I'm worthy. I'm worth more. And I choose me. Choose you. Y'all choose you every single day. Wake up and choose you. And whether you are emotionally involved with somebody, do the work. And it's hard work. I did a whole lot of mental unpacking. Choose you. I promise you will attract to you. I had to figure out why do I keep attracting emotionally unavailable men? Girl, because your whole life, you've held a candle to an emotionally unavailable brother that you wanted every man to be like. And that's what you attracted. I didn't know, though. But now that I know, I'm good. I got it. What kind of crap is she talking about? An emotional blood brother? Your biological blood brother can't be your husband. I repeat, your emotional blood brother, older or not, is never going to be your surrogate husband. That is your brother from the same mother. The issue is your father. That was not there for you. That is the cause. So you have got a 20 year old, you got another 50 year old brother who want to holler at you because 20 years ago he hit it and he want to taste that 20 year old, that, that 40, 50 year old vagina. Fine. But the fact of the matter is the issue is your father and the lack that you need resolution 
with your father before he died. Because you'll never have issues resolve your brother because your brother needs resolution with his father, your father. Both of y'all need resolution with your fathers. That's why it's idiotic her to talk about she blew up and had an argument with her blood brother. He don't even know what being a man is like. And he been Side nugget, I grew up without my father. He left me when I was five. My brother, who is two years younger than me, who I'm having an issue with, is going through a nervous breakdown because he got a divorce. A typical divorce that millions of black people go through every day. He meets a woman age 40, he's 40, they have a child at 42, then another twins, and by the time he's 47, she filed for divorce, irreconcilable differences, we know the story, we've been there. My mom, as I just told you, divorced my dad in 1980, because he cheated on her, and she was like, I'm done. But I didn't tell you the other facts. My mom picked a man who had a child with another woman because she loved the penis. My mom should have never married that man in the first place because he already been married and divorced. So what do you think? I'm going to make him work the second time? No, it failed. The third time? No, it failed. The fourth time? No, it fell the fifth time. No, it fell. My father at least got eight kids. And I don't know how many marriages because he hid from his family. I think the last time anyone knew where he lived may have been like 80s. Because every woman he got with, everything was under her name. And he would lie to her and manipulate her. And she would find out, eventually she would find out, always too late, always too late, always too late. Two babies later, one child later. Who was, and, that, and that's why I said judgment is going to pay for it, bro. He got to pay for it. Because he had a willful mind, a willful heart. He knew exactly what he was doing. And that made me decide at a very early age, I refuse to be going out and destroying women's lives. And I love women. Boy, do I love women. But I'd rather be alone, masturbate, look at porn than ever be just going through vaginas just for the simple fact I want a warm, hot body and deal with this right here. She's talking about her brother and her having an out. And now I'm 51 years old and I got to do me. You know, that's going to be an issue for probably 10 years. It won't be until someone dies and the funeral comes that people say, well, let's get back and start talking. But did that really resolve the issues that girl had at 20 years old or at 15 years old inside of that 52 year old body that we're looking at right now? Answer, no. I got this. I got this. And if I can do this, you can too. What is the relationship between awareness and thinking? Awareness is the space in which thoughts exist when that space has become conscious of itself. Once you have had a glimpse of awareness or presence, you know it firsthand. Yes. In the church world, we call this the Holy Spirit guiding you into all truth. She calls it awareness and thinking. Well, that's just, I call it PhD discipleship, logical analysis. But the Bible, and of course, we know does not explain individual sexual relationships. It's a spiritual book. 
Husbands, love your wife as Christ of the church, man. I mean, no offense. It's a great, 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 great conversation right here. And for many, many people, many, many people, the battle had always been in Ephesians chapter 5 going on and on and on and on. And I get it. The Bible does not clearly get off into the individual relationship problems between your mom and your father your grandmother and grandfather, your great-grandmother and great-grandfather, your 15th great-grandparent, ex-great-parent. And unfortunately, you never will. And that's where I hate to say it, I do believe in therapy. But I don't believe in getting off into some of these doctrines like this guy, Eckhart Tolle. Let's look up who Eckhart Tolle is. So y'all can see who he is. What is the religion of the power of now? It draws from a variety of spiritual traditions. Buddhism, mysticism, Yahshua, and Zen. You cannot live your life mixing faiths. The Bible teaches us clearly in Deuteronomy chapter 28. This very important concept shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to all his commandments, all his commandments which I command thee this day, I will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Right? Verse 15 say, but if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to all his commandments and statutes, all these curses shall come upon thee. But what are the commandments and statutes? Well, go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, and you'll be able to get a basic list of the laws in Deuteronomy or in Leviticus, right? You go to Leviticus. You can see right off the top about offerings, and these are these are laws. Okay? And before you can really understand the grace of Christ, you must really understand the law. A lot of people hate to talk about the law because they say the law is hard, but by understanding the law, you realize how much God really wants us to obey him. See, those that live in today's world here, the grace, they think the grace. For example, let me give you a kind of a lie that's pushed out today. Right here is Word of Faith International Christian Center, and we have a Sunday morning service being taught by uh, one of my former pastors, pretty much the first man that really I saw on TV that transformed my life from afar. Before there was YouTube, there was Sunday morning television, 8 o'clock, 30-minute slots, and you had to pay for them on TV. Now, today, they don't, you don't need to pay for them anymore. You get it for free as long as you pay for internet connection, twenty dollars a month. I can watch Wolfit online right now. Five hundred and eighty-five people are watching. This minister named Keith Andre Butler is in his seventies, looks good, and he's pulling out Romans twelve right now, which I can only knew he would. It's basic, easy peasy Japanese verse. We, but it's basic, and I, when I say basic. He's teaching the same basic stuff that he taught 30 years ago to people that have heard the same basic stuff for 30 years and they're still baby, baby, baby Christians. The only difference is that they've been in the church 30 years. But does that mean that you have gotten to the mature level of strong meat as the scriptures teach? Answer in O with an exclamation point. And so this minister... Um, basically, for about a decade, disappeared from the face of the earth. And honestly, he did because he had sinned. Sexual morality, he sinned. But so does everybody. Sex morality is a part of the body. If it's a part of human life and couples in general, it's a part of the church body. 
And of course, in the church, when, when someone sins, they kind of sit down for a period of years and then they come back. All right, it's part two. I somehow, I don't know what I did. I accidentally hit the wrong button. And I was, I have already part one video. This will be part two. I was trying to drag this little two bar down on my screen so I wouldn't click it, but I clicked it. I came off talking about the Sunday morning World Fix service in Word of Faith International Christian Center. This is the World Fix service, uh, Word of Faith International Christian Center in Southwood, Michigan, under Mr. Keith Butler. He is a, now I would say about 75, he's probably the age of my father, 76, 77, you just don't look it. Go look it online, we can find out how old he is right now. And click on it. Born in 1955. So my mom was born in 1952. So if she's 70, he about 68. At the peak. This should be the peak of where he is in the ministry. It shows that he has 22,000 member congregation. When I was growing up, it was 30. People left. Okay. He became a politician. He decided to be Republican. He was the only Republican and a city of Democrats. He argued the book of C will meet any need, which is a bunch of crap, because the same people that he built his church with have moved to Dallas, have moved to Atlanta, have left because they did not fix the political issues of the city that those people lived in, just like in Detroit, around the suburbs, as well as Chicago, around the world. Why? Racism, guys. Not a seed, not a seed, racism, okay? Prejudice. We're 15% of the population. So what he did, he decided, I'm going to go to Brazil, I'm going to go to Bulgaria, I'm going to go all these white places, and I'm going to preach the word of God to them. Well, they don't need you because they are already blessed and cursed because they're not Hebrew Israelites. So they said he set up over 300 churches. Anybody can set a church up. And basically, he tried to run as a Republican. So now he lost in 2006 to run for Senate. Yeah, he left the church right after Brother Hagan had died to go run for Senate. Lost. And then in 2008, he then goes and wants to run in front of the executive board of the um, United Christian for Israel under John Hagan. So right there is a problem because he doesn't know the word of God. The people that are so-called Ashkenaz are not the true Jews. And that's a big problem. It's coming out now. The truth is being revealed. But John Hagee was wrong as well. But a lot of people found the that. So then it says he went to Round Rock, Texas, which they decided to start a church in Round Rock, Texas. Now, 2008 was right when I was graduating from Oklahoma University. And they renamed it Faith for Life. I walked and I went to that church. Then they renamed their church from uh, to Pistis. And they went to Dallas. Then, in 2016, they go back to, to Michigan. What the? F exactly. Will of God? No. Missing God? Yes. Why they go to Texas? Well, because, number one, everybody in mom was going to Texas, Dallas, because that's where the black people of, Dow of Detroit were moving to, okay? But now whites are coming back to Detroit. And so, the issue is Mr. B Brother Butler had a, a situation that's been talked about, okay, Yeah, he had an affair with his wife, Deborah. Duh. You can go look it up online. It's not anything that should be a shock. It has, it, it's a valid argument. Now, it might be washed away because he's 68, but the fact of the matter is things happen every day, okay?
And this is her, and this is how the women look way back in Detroit. They look half white, but they but they want to be 100% black. No, they're 50-50, okay? But that's only in Detroit. No, it doesn't matter. Now, here is Keith Butler and Pastor Deborah Butler, and this is from three years ago. And you can see now more videos come out because now years have passed. White people cheat, black people cheat, people cheat, okay? You go online, you can see these are all the videos, and she's, of course, still 42-year marriage. She has to stay married to him. There's no other option she got. I mean, if you are a divorced woman in this life, you lose, as we talked about with this video I'm watching of this girl, okay? One second. So, as I pull up just the truth, and it's not a lie, unfortunately, it's the truth, we hear what happens to a lot. A lot of these men are, are going to be wanted by women. So, I wanted you to read this. What is a nice Jewish girl doing with a bishop, a pastor, a rabbi in Southfield, Michigan? All right. So, this is, of course, Ashkenaz, fake Ashkenaz. But remember what Brother Butler did was he got connected with them, and John Hagee is a part of this. And so everybody who is Talmudic Jewish, meaning that they um, are converts to Judaism, to the Judaism, not to the Hebrew Torah, but the Talmud, he's a part of that. So Kathy Laner, that's the Judaist person that's a part of this, and it's a part of an organization she goes, it's not every Sunday morning and a nice Jewish girl. Well, you ain't nice. The mere fact you put the word nice in front of you really sounds ridiculous. One or more woman of a certain age and a girl find herself in the center seat of a 5,000 seat sanctuary in the evangelical church, foot tapping to a 200 member choir and a 100 person orchestra. Well, that is my old church, okay? So now, get past all that bad mess. So now, I got myself, this, this is a story, back in November 2015, not that long ago. Opportunity to take Bishop Butler, founder, to a private hospital in Jerusalem, Israel. So what? All right. It's a well-kept secret. It's a jewel in Israel's crown paid for us Americans. Most amazing pediatric rehab center in the world of a disabled child, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all right, anyway, 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 anyway. I'm going to have to say I'm on the wrong side of this argument, okay? Because the fact of the matter is, I refuse to acknowledge them as true Israelites, no matter how much everyone else says it's okay. And that pretty much is a worthless video, a worthless blog. What about what we're here to talk about? What we're here to talk about right here is... Um, Unfortunate, sad, but true. Why? Because we ministers can all sin, all right? So, what's the scoop? I live in Michigan and don't know what you're talking about. It's a new church. Uh, I go to Pierre I don't know any other knowledge. It says, I do believe Keith Butler's son is over Sunday services now, and he was. You now notice they took him away. You don't see Andre no more. He actually now has got another church inside of downtown Detroit that he's trying to build on a sister channel. So they're trying to be multi-campus like, like the white churches. We got Word of Faith Southfield, Word of Faith this, Word of Faith that. Right, right, right. We know. The old T is this. Bishop Butler got his niece from his wife's side pregnant. He, he was he was up in the woman. He left Michigan and started preaching in texts where nobody talks about the scandal. Exactly, he did. The church lost many minimers because of his infidelity, and that's exactly why it dropped. It's not a lie. It's true, okay? All right? Then he ran for Senate as well and lost. Why? Probably because of the for God. At a time, he was making $700,000 a year, and he's a Republican. 
which that's true. He used to be on TV a lot, but I think that all of his kids are in the ministry with their wives and husbands. And so it's now kind of, as he said, it's cold brew. No, it ain't cold. It's true. And unfortunately, God forgives. And we have to forgive as well. But the reality is, I wonder about that girl, that niece, knowing that she had to have an abortion, because there's no way she had that baby. If she got knocked up and she had that baby, there would be another child on this planet forever known as Keith Butler's child. And you know <laughs> the damage that would do. Look at Greenleaf. The TV is so funny because... There's a TV show called Greenleaf that matches what's happened in real life. In Greenleaf, there was a, there was affairs, and that was a, a, a true story as well for the black. I mean, that was a church out of out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. So again, it's not did not brother Butler at all. It's just to recognize that we all got to. Watch for the vagina or don't go into the ministry. We all can be married for 50 years and still have affairs. Don't get it twisted. Just because you've been married for 50 years don't mean crap. You still can have affairs. Oh, yeah. So, this right here is a blog that came out 2006, right around the same time. When I was at Rama, or I was at OU at this time. Yesterday, the primary day on our only connected in the midst of the media where I've been in a frenzy over a Democratic contest between Jolie Brennan and da, 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 but Michigan as well. Well, I had an interesting fight going on in the Republican primary for Senate where Keith Butler looks uh, for all the world like a corrupt evangelist in the Jim Baker mold. Wow. Is running for a chance to face a female in November. Looks like Michigan was smart enough to reject this loony. There's a white people, of course. A foundation has put a document branding Butler as a fanatic and documenting his fraudulent activities. Well, I'm a fanatic. Now, fraudulent activities, I like to know what they are. Butler is the head of Word of Favor National Christian Center, a far-right Christian church. I didn't know at the time that was my church. Being in Jacksonville, Florida, I just did not think they were far-right. I thought they were middle. And this is 2006. So you can see where Word of Faith is today. Why people laugh at Word of Faith? You know why? Because the black folks are tiny as hell up there. And you operate like you were you're white and you're never gonna be white. You're never you're under the curse dude Romney twenty eight. So, but that's what he did. If you thought about it, that's why he went with Kenneth Copeland. That's why you, you, you never saw him at Rainbow. I mean it starts to kind of connect the dots here. I get it now. So I'm grateful that I left Word of Faith and left FCC because I now see where it was going. All these are signs of corruption are there. Uh, from the meaningless degrees, well, I don't know about that. You, meaningless degrees, excuse me. That's BS. Uh, but from unaccredited institutes, I obviously call it mine, my Bible school uncredited, to an honorary degree from an obscure Canadian Bible school, which, okay. Uh, I, I go to East found 81 ministries over the world, and this is 2006. So now we're in 2023, and he's still here, right? So, uh, who won that? Who won that, bro? And I know it's the guy who wrote this crap. Um, and then he says, Voluntary transparency demanded by groups like Ministry Watch or Evangelical Council for financial accountability. And of course, these are white organizations that want to know about you, but you are. 
we don't give a damn about you because none of our people are part of your organization. It should be a black organization asking for money, but I'd be damned if a white organization will ask me about money that comes from my black people to my black church. When you got white churches do the same thing. Ministry Watch uh, urged people to stop giving money because they were not making, uh, they were not provide financial statements available to ensure they were being properly used. Well, most churches don't. 99% of churches in America don't push out their financial statements. I don't like that, but that's the truth. All right. But his wife have a $1.3 million home in Troy, Michigan, which most white people got. $1.3 million ain't crap. For which they paid cash. So, of course, they paid cash because they got money from the offerings from our people. And that's, yeah. In fact, over the last couple of decades, they got 20 properties, all of them paid in cash. Okay? So, if you look, I think that's wrong. I do. And I ain't, that's how they brothers going to judge for that. So, now, here we go. Word of faith has some many such frauds. From Kenneth Copeland to Kenneth Hagen to Frederick Price to Benny Hinn. Wow. 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 And you know, this definitely hates us. Wow. And, okay, Hank Hanegraaff. He pulled out a Hank Hanegraaff argument. And what was this from? Science Blogs. Dispatch by a science blog. Well, when you're a science blog, you don't believe in God anyway, so you'll find out that stuff. This is what makes sense. He said, it, it makes sense to do this. This is your logical and the words from this. Latina, amen, which means worship and divine service. Did he say that when you provide your body as a sacrifice to God, decide that I'm going to make sure it stays holy, that this is his worship? what he said he said so worship God is not just lifting your hand it's not even just lifting your mouth it's also what you do with your body like having sex with your niece and getting her pregnant like having sex with your niece and getting her pregnant bruh like you had sex with your niece and got her pregnant, boss. Man, it's not, I mean, you're 68 now, but there was a period of time when you were 48 where you're much more viral, much more sexy, much more beautiful, and women would want that penis in a heartbeat. It's interesting to pull that verse out and preach that, right? And I, and I know he has to do that. But I only can imagine in his mind, he's like, yeah, man, I'm sitting there lying to these people. I I know I've done wrong, and I you know, pray that it never gets found out. Uh-huh. Pulling out one verse out of a sentence, reasonable service, he's gonna spend an hour on reasonable service. Then the Bible says your body, first Corinthians chapter three and six, says your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And they it said G five G. Glorify God with your body which belongs to God. That's correct. Did you now, do that? Sir? That the only people who might buy this tape today might be uh, Pastor Michelle over there. She might be the only one who gets it. Hello, somebody. No, by no, no, hello, no, hello, bro. I, 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 this was the man that I love listening to. This is the man that I watched and followed. 
this the man that people still watch and follow. As long as he looks good and he's tall and he doesn't get judged by the law almighty, they can sit there and state their stuff while failing to run for failing and running for center because you shouldn't have. By failing run, you shouldn't have never done it out of the will of God. But hey, it's okay. God is helping. This uh, girl right now I'll come back and talk about the God and her opinions. It is no longer just a concept in your mind. You can then make a conscious choice to be present rather to indulge in useless thinking. You can invite presence into your life. That is to say, make space. That's what I had to do with this lady on Monday, y'all. Who is presence? Socratic method, what is presence? BS, that's right, BS. Presence. We invite the Holy Spirit, the being of the Holy Spirit. Who is now on the earth and the comforter that God sent to us? Not presence. Fallacious. Uh, I had to make space for her. Because I could have, I'm not, hopefully I won't work with, I don't want to work with her again. But I might not work with her again, but I might, right? Like, if we got to be colleagues ever again, and just for now, I had to make space to show her, to give her some knowledge, to share with her, this is the damage that we doing to each other. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's our fault. And we need to finish strong so that we can start strong for these kids, for our staff in, these coming, in this coming year. You can invite presence into your life. That is to say, make space. With the grace of awakening comes responsibility. You can either try to go on as if nothing has happened or you can see its significance and recognize the arising of awareness as the most important thing that can happen to you. Opening yourself to the emerging consciousness and bringing its light into this world then becomes the primary purpose of your life. I want to know the mind of God, Einstein said. The rest are details. What is the mind of God? Consciousness. What does it mean to know the mind of God? To be aware. What are the details? Your outer purpose and whatever happens outwardly. So while you are perhaps still waiting for something significant to happen in your life, you may not realize that the most significant thing that can happen to a human being has already happened within you. The beginning of the separation process of thinking and awareness. Many people who are going through the early stages of the awakening process are no longer certain what their outer purpose is. What drives the world no longer drives them. Seeing the madness of our civilization so clearly, they may feel somewhat alienated from the culture around them. Some feel that they inhabit a no man's land between two worlds. They are no longer run by the ego. Yet the arising awareness has not yet become fully integrated into their lives. Inner and outer purpose have not merged. All right, this next section is the final section. And of course it's long and I'm trying to decide, should I go ahead and read it? Cause I still got homework to do. I still got to work out today. I still got to go to the grocery store today and get my mind right. Um. Okay. Cause if I started, I got to finish it because it is, Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
16 and a half pages. What do I do? Do I read? Do I not? Do I read? Do I not? 16 pages is a lot of pages, y'all. I just read, let me see, one, two, three, four. I just read six, and we're half an hour in. 16. I think I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. And I might try to come early in the morning. We'll see. I'm not going to promise anything because I can't ever get it together when I say I'm going to do something. But the next section is called a dialogue, a dialogue on inner purpose. And when I start it, I need to be able to finish it. So today it probably would take me another hour and a half. And I just don't want to commit that kind of time today. So what I'm going to do is share some of my summer fun with you all today. And then I'll give <clears throat> an hour and a half to finishing it to, uh, whenever I finish it. So some of my summer fun, let me see. I'm, let me click over here on my monitor. I'm going to start with, um, oh, I feel like I should go back though. Hold on. To my Boogaloo's graduation. Because that's kind of what prom is actually what started summer. See you later, Foxy. Prom is what started summer for me. Should I go back to my Boogaloo's prom? But then I will have to click through a lot of this stuff that I really don't think I want to click through. And give y'all all my business. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much ends the blog. She's now off. But, you know, she's a content creator, and she's getting her PhD. And I don't know what, but every, like Kevin Samuels said, we all are. I, I'm not married, so I can get my PhD because I don't have the responsibilities of having children and a wife. But for a lot of women who are failed in their marriage, um, now the kids are going to college, they go get their PhD, too. And, I, and remember... Only 36% of black women got a bachelor's, okay? And so out of that, maybe 5% got a PhD. And the black community, I think it's 29, 20%, 23% of us got a bachelor's. So what, 1% of us probably got a PhD? It's a very small number, very small number. But I want my doctor divinity, and I, as I just read earlier about Brother Keith, Butler, I want to be from a reputable university, despite how they're going to attack me because I believe in Kenneth Hagin, and that's okay. That comes with the territory. It's Pastor Tyrone signing out, brother. Add this to part two.